guys, welcome back to Starring Milana. I'm your host, Millie Rock, aka Milana, but really Milana, aka Millie Rock. <laughs> welcome back. Thank you so much for listening. This is my second podcast episode ever, and I'm so happy that you guys are on this journey with me. Um, Please make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Starring Milana. And of course, there is a visual to this podcast, youtube.com backslash Starring Milana. And if you're listening to this on a podcast app, please make sure to rate and review and leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it. So let's get into the podcast. On Starring Milana, we have three different segments. The first segment is the BTS, where we kind of catch up with me, and I give you a little bit of a preview of my past week. The second segment is the talkworthy segment. This is where I take things that are going on in the media and kind of try to offer you a new perspective. And the third and last segment is called Dropping Gems, where I give you a topic of the week and oftentimes drop a few gems. These are topics that we all deal with. They're often inspired by my encounters with people, events, maybe something I read. Just very random, but definitely meaningful. All right, here we go. Let's get into the first segment, the BTS. So what happened this week? Oh, okay, guys. So like last month, my coworker was walking around with these really cute glasses. And I'm like, oh my God, are those prescription? And she's like, no girl, they're the blue light blocking glasses. I was like, what? So I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a lot of blue light going on in the world. First sunlight, but then the screens, like our computers, our phones, we're just exposed to a lot of blue light. And allegedly, it's not that great for you. So I decided to get these glasses about a month ago, but I didn't really start using them until this week, like using them consistently. Just to give you a little bit of context, I'm on my computer at work all day. That's at least eight hours. And also I'm on my phone all day, like most of you guys. So that's a lot of exposure for me. So I got these glasses and if you're watching on YouTube and if you're not, you can always go back and see. I'm gonna put them on right now. They're so cute, like bulky. I feel like a teacher, but I love them, okay? So I got these glasses and I started wearing them at work. They're working pretty well. Um, I think my eyes don't feel as strained throughout the day, but where I found them most effective is when I wore them in the evening. So apparently there's like studies done that you will sleep better at night if you are not exposed to blue light three to four hours before you go to sleep. For us, it's kind of like inevitable. We're on our phones. I mean, our phones are our lives. So like, how are you gonna tell somebody that's going to sleep at 11 to stop touching their phone at like seven or 8 p.m.? It's probably not realistic. So I have been wearing my glasses in the evenings and I have to tell you, I am kind of sleeping just a little bit better. It's not like a big drastic change, but I do feel it. So I'm loving my glasses so far and I got them at the mall, really cheap kind of janky to be honest with you like I feel like they're really flimsy but if I really decide to like wear these in my life all the time I'm going to invest in a better pair but right now I, I like them I'm, I'm here for them so shout out to my coworker Jenny from the block thank you for recommending those what else oh so I got a text message from Orange Theory Fitness telling me that this is my one year anniversary with them and I really can't believe I've been there for a year because that place is like hell. It's torture. It is awful, okay? If you don't know what it is, it's basically kind of like high interval training, like a lot of cardio. It's a class where you wear a heart monitor and you rotate between the treadmill, the rower, and the weight room. And everyone in the class is doing the same workout, but you're at a different level. So if you're just kind of starting to work out, you're not in great shape, you're considered like a power walker, your weights are lighter, you're in that kind of zone. If you've been there for a little while, you're kind of like a jogger, and if you've really been working out for a long time and you're in shape, you're considered like a runner. So the workout really is what you make it. So I've been going there for a year, and let me tell you, does not get easier. Like not even a little bit. Every time I walk out of there, I'm like, what the fuck just happened to me? And I love it because that means it's effective. I have done a lot of different workouts. People always ask me like, what do you do? You look pretty good. And 
I used to do kickboxing. I used to do, I used to dance, take dance classes and Orange Theory. And I loved all of those things. I still do some here and there. But for the most part, I have now kind of dedicated my whole like fitness routine to Orange Theory. I go four to five times a week. And it is, like I said, has been the most effective. I have seen the most change in my body. Anyway, I have a free class. It has to be at my studio, but if anyone is interested in trying out Orange Theory, give me a call. I mean, or leave me a comment. If you don't know me and don't have my phone number, just hit me up on Instagram. And, you know, if you're the first one, I'd love to take you to a free class at Orange Theory with me. Just be prepared to die. Um, what else happened this week? Oh, my book club of two. You guys, I got done with the first four chapters of Michelle Obama's Becoming. And I have to say, I'm very impressed. She is such a good storyteller. She painted the picture very well. I mean, I can imagine her sharing a room with her brother, with the divider. I mean, it's just, it's brilliant. And I think it's very relatable. I recommend the book. I'm only four chapters in. It's really dense. We're going to start the next four chapters next week, but it, we're going strong. Um, if you want to join our book club, hit us up. So my heart. The Sopranos 20-year anniversary was on January 10th, you guys. The first episode came out in 1999. And I have to tell you, I believe it is the best show of all time. Don't at me. It is the best show of all time. I always say that Friends is my favorite show, but The Sopranos is hands down the best show. It changed TV forever. The character development is ridiculous. I mean, this show is so well done. I've watched a lot of TV. I've watched a lot of Netflix. I've watched a lot of HBO. And I, you can't tell me that there is a better show than Sopranos. So ahead of its time. So if you haven't seen it, I'm actually really jealous of you if you haven't seen it because that means you get to experience it for the first time. Just like, oh, you're so lucky. I'm definitely going to rewatch it again, but it's a great show and I definitely recommend it. So the last thing I want to talk about is actually what's going on right now. So this episode is going to be released on Monday, but I'm recording it now. It is a Saturday, 5 p.m., and I should probably be at the Cowboys and Rams game, but I'm not. I'm here talking to myself and Lena. <laughs> so the Cowboys and the Rams are playing each other. I'm a Cowboys fan. Please don't leave the podcast. I love the Cowboys. I know it's weird for a lot of people. You guys don't get it. But I have been a Cowboys fan since I was seven. All I remember is moving to America and like Troy Aikman and the Cowboys and all the hype. And I just instantly became a fan. And I have been a fan ever since. Okay. I love the Cowboys. I'm waving my shirt on my video right now on YouTube. Go Cowboys. But I also love the Rams. Okay. They're my second team. Because we live in L.A. and the Rams are back in L.A. And I really don't understand people who don't support their, like, home team, like their, their city team. I don't get it. I support the Rams. They're both my teams. Um, obviously, I'm a bigger Cowboys fan, but I do love the Rams. So this is a game that I probably should be at. But let me tell you, let me tell you, when I search the price of those tickets, mm-mm, mm-mm, it's $1,000 for some janky-ass seats. No. Here's the thing. Some people value experiences. I value things I can look at and feel and touch. I would rather spend my money on something that I can use. A thousand dollars, I mean, I don't think there's like anything that I would, I wouldn't pay for like a concert besides travel, like a show or an event. I can't imagine paying a thousand dollars for some janky seats. Actually, the only thing that I would spend probably more money on is a live taping of a friend's episode. I would give almost anything to be at that, just because of what that show means to me, to be there in person. Obviously, they're not filming anymore, but y'all can have all of my money. But anyway, um, we'll see how the game goes. It's going on now, so obviously I can't keep track of it because I'm trying to be professional and I'm here with you guys. But I'm excited to see who wins. I'm going to just go ahead and assume the Rams, but you never know. Football can be tricky, and so can the Cowboys. So we'll see what happens, but best of luck to both teams. Okay, guys, so we're going to move on to the talk-worthy segment. And 
You know, kind of like last week, there was a few things going on, but I feel like there's just one thing that really needs focus um, that I want to talk about, like a main thing. And it's going to be the government shutdown. So if you don't know, this is the longest in history that the government has shut down, or it's called like a partial shutdown. I don't know. But I'm going to try very hard on this podcast to kind of like refrain from talking a lot about politics. But this one, this topic in particular, or what's going on now really kind of like, I don't know, just like really, I guess the word I'm going to use, but I always use, which is the truth, is struck a chord with me. It really kind of just kind of made me start thinking about a lot of things. Like, first of all, how do we get here again? Like, I think a lot of these topics for me are inspired by the question, like, how do we get here? Why are we here? Why are we here? Okay. And I'm going to start off by being very transparent with you guys, because I believe that context is everything. So I'm a registered Democrat, and I have been since the day I started voting. I'm very much willing to listen to appointing views. I actually enjoy like healthy debate debates and conversations, because I think it's important. That's the only way you can learn about someone else's, again, perspectives and views by talking to someone who has different beliefs than you. The reason why, the two main reasons why I am a registered Democrat is because um, of women's health and reproductive rights and also Democrats' view on immigration. Those things are very important to me. With that being said, I try not to take things at face value, okay? I always try to figure out, like, what is a person's intention? What is the intent behind what they're saying and what they're doing? So I really try to sit here and think, like, what the fuck is the problem? Why are Democrats so opposed to this wall? And why is Trump putting, like, everything behind this wall? If you follow politics, you kind of already know. And if you don't, I'm just going to give you, like, very, very small brief, like, thing of what's going on, right? So if you've never thought about this, which I really didn't, there's already some sort of barrier on the border, right? Majority parts of the border have fencing. How sturdy is the fencing? I don't think it's that sturdy everywhere, but there is definitely some sort of barrier and there are definitely patrol officers everywhere. So that already exists. Another fact is that a lot of most illegal immigrants actually that came here that are here are here because of an expired visa and they did not cross the border. Let me explain this again. They did not cross the border illegally. Most people that are here are because they flew in or came in through a bus or however they got here, but it was on a visa and it has expired. And I think that number was like over 600,000 or something like wild like that, okay? And also representatives from districts that are actually on the border deny that there is even an actual crisis going on, which is what Trump said. Like, he used a lot of rhetoric to kind of scare people to believe, like, them and their families are in danger, okay? But let me paint you a little picture. Do you think these people that are leaving everything behind, walking in deserts or wherever the hell they're crossing from, miles and miles, hundreds of miles with nothing. Most of them, two-thirds of them, I believe, are families. Do you think they're coming here trying to murder everybody? Like, I don't think that is their intention. Most of them actually turn themselves in at the border because they're seeking asylum, okay? So, again, again, let me just say this. There are barriers almost everywhere, even at the westernmost part of the country, Like in San Diego, there is a fence that goes all the way through into the ocean. And if you try to swim around it, there's there's officers there. So it's not as easy as they're making it seem out to be. And also, the numbers have went down like dramatically. I think it was over 1.5 million in 2000 of people who tried to cross, and now it's under 400,000. So I'm not sure what crisis he's speaking of. I do agree that we do have a lot of like illegal immigration here. And there's, that's probably, you know, at some point a problem that we need to tackle, but it is not the problem. Like to try to allocate $6 billion to this wall where some sort of barrier already exists, doesn't sound like a necessity at the moment. Like does Flint have clean water yet? I don't fucking know. I should probably look into that. But like there are bigger issues. We are trillions of dollars in debt. I don't think this is a necessity, and that is what the Democrats are kind of saying, right? This is what where the standoff is. It's like, this isn't where we should be spending our money. So knowing this, 
and I think Trump knows this as well. Knowing this, I was trying to figure out, like, okay, what is his intention then? Like, why is he so adamant about this wall? And to me, it just appears that it's, it's ego. It's just ego. It, like, it's a dick-swinging contest. He ran on the basis of, we're going to build this wall. That was his, pretty much his whole campaign. That's what he said. He said, we're going to build this wall, make America great again. We're building this wall. So a lot of the people that voted for him are anticipating this wall. And I think he needs to satisfy his base to do well in 2020. That is why I think he is so adamant about this wall. But at what expense, right? So aside from like the billions of dollars that it would cost, more importantly, like this is at the expense of hardworking People, hardworking citizens who are going to work every day, not getting paid because they work at jobs that are, you know, government jobs. They're not getting paid. Some of them living paycheck to paycheck. They're struggling at what expense? What is the intention? And I don't believe that it's to keep America safe because the crisis is not what they say it is. I don't believe that that's what it is. I really just think it's ego and I feel that he needs to assert his power in some way. And I think he's scared. I think that he knows if he doesn't get this approved, he might not do well at re-election. So that's kind of what I think about this government shutdown. I don't really have an answer to like compromise. I mean, I don't know if the Democrats should step, step down and just like sign this this budget and let him have his wall. I don't know if they give in at what expense. Okay. So I would really love to hear your feedback, especially for people who know more about this topic than I do. I'm just like trying to look at it from a different angle. Um, so I'd really love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think. And now we're going to move on to the last segment of the show called Dropping Gems. The topic of the week for this week is the validation of one. So I actually had another topic planned, but I changed my mind because when this happened, stuff was like boiling up inside of me. I mean, there was like a fire just burning and I'm like, no, I need to talk about how I feel right now, okay? So for those of you, again, who don't know, this is my second episode, okay? I released my first one last week. And I eventually one day plan to kind of break down my whole, I, I don't know what to call this, talking, hosting, personality, like, journey. I've been on this for six years. I've been doing this for six years, on and off, did different things in between, um, but nonetheless, six years. So I'll get into that eventually, but I just want you guys to realize, you know, how long it's been. So last Monday... I put out my first um, podcast episode. It's a big deal for me. I had a lot of reservations, especially since I've been doing this for six years. It's hard for me to come back and start something new because there was a lot of, I guess, whatever you want to call it, I, I you can call it failures. There are, have been a lot of times where I've kind of failed, right? So had a lot of reservations about it. I put this out, and thanks to you guys, I would call it somewhat of a success. I got a lot of great feedback. Lena just gave me a dirty look. I think she um, wanted me to say it was a great success, and it was. So thank you guys for your support. I had a lot of great feedback. I was honestly personally shocked about the amount of support that I got because I just kind of came out of nowhere doing this, and um, people were really into it. So thank you guys. So, you know, after six years of shit, I landed on this like feeling really good. Today is a good day. I released my podcast. Everyone's like hype for me. I'm on a fucking high, okay? And then comes the devil. <clears throat> the devil came in the form of a troll. I put up a picture promoting the episode and I got a comment from a fake page. And when I say fake, I mean like fake, fake. Like, that shit was so fake that you can tell it was just made, okay? And the comment basically said, you're not even that interesting. Okay. 
aside from like having a strong idea of who it might be, the first thing that came to mind is, bitch, I'm fascinating, okay? But then, <laughs> but then I sat with it. I sat with it and I thought about it and it really got to me. You have to understand what type of vulnerable state people are in when they put out a body of work. And the different of vulnerability varies when it's actually what you want to do. So what I mean by that is if I'm working at a whatever job just to get paid and doing whatever I do on the side, right? If that's what I'm doing, then someone's negative remarks about my work don't really offend me because it's not what I really want to do. It's not the thing. It's not my one thing. It's a different story, right? But when it's the one thing you want to do, you might have insecurities about it. In general, I'm not a very insecure person, but right now at the moment, I'm very, very vulnerable because this is all very new to me. And this is the one thing I want to do. I'm so nervous and anxious every time I have to sit down and record, but you know, it's anxiety that I love it, because this is something that I love to do. So I'm on this high, right? I'm on this high, I'm having a great day. And then instantly I just felt so low. Like I felt so low. And you guys might think it's silly. I actually would think it's silly if you were coming and telling me like, oh, this fake page commented and I'm, I feel this way. I'd be like, it's a fake page. But the reason like comments like this are tough and they get to you is because it's probably touching on something that's already in your mind. Because my biggest insecurity about it is exactly that. Like, is this interesting? Is anyone going to fucking care? Is anyone listening? To be honest with you, that is my natural and first insecurity. So somebody touched on that, right? But when you let these types of things affect you, they create like an atmosphere of negativity. They allow other negative thoughts to enter your mind, things that you aren't even thinking about. They're just automatically consuming you because now you've opened the gateway for a storm of negativity. But this is the key, my children, okay? <laughs> I'm a different person now. And the difference of who I was then and who I am now is self-awareness. Like in the past, I would have dove into the negativity and honestly, like maybe even quit. Maybe did a few more episodes and was just like, whatever, I quit. But I'm not the same person anymore. I have the capacity to separ separate myself from moments like this and from just negative thoughts and look at it as an outsider, right? And when I did that, the first thing that I thought about was where did the confidence go? Why... Why was I so affected by a remark that was made by someone that I didn't know, a fake page, and to top it all off, that I don't really think deep down inside is even true because I fucking think I'm interesting. And if you're listening, you probably think I'm interesting. And if you don't, bye. But if you are, thank you for listening. And I do think, I think everyone is interesting. I think people are so unique and everyone has something interesting to say if you give them the chance to, if you decide to listen. So... Deep down inside, I don't really think that it's true. But where did the confidence go in that moment, right? And my confidence is very much intertwined with my faith, okay? God is where my confidence stems from, right? Because I was created by him, I'm loved by him, and this is why the majority of the time I'm able to walk with my head held high and I just love myself unconditionally, because I know that God loves me. So, which leads me to my ultimate point, is validation. It is one thing to have the support of many, but it is just as valuable to have the validation of one. For me, that validation is God, right? For you, it might be yourself. But if we all live a life that seeks praise from everyone around us, then I don't think that we'll be like true to ourselves. We may end up doing things that we don't want to do or what others think we should do, and we lose ourselves in the process. So I know it's hard to kind of focus on the validation of one because many, okay, the many feed 
our ego. They provide us with reassurance. Even if it's phony, we get that reassurance and it feels good to us, right? When people like what you have to say, when they comment, when they're following you, when they're reposting you, like it feels really good. And a lot of it is good. Some of it may truly be positive, but if you just focus on the validation of one, I think you will become more successful. When you have clarity and understanding of like who you are and what you want to become, you focus solely on that. What saved me this time and I think like hopefully in the future is self-awareness. And I don't think it's something that comes easy. It took a long time for me to develop this and to come to this place. Um, I don't know. I, I think it started with me just as a young child. I've always been able to put myself in other people's shoes and as I grow older, I am able to take myself out of situations that involve myself and look at it as an outsider. So that is kind of where my self-awareness comes from. Um, I don't have the answers on how to get rid of insecurities because I still have them. And I think it's very natural. Um, I don't even know if they ever go away. Like, I don't think self-doubt ever really goes away. But the key is having self-awareness because you can't change what you're first not aware of, right? So self-awareness is the key. So in conclusion, (laughs) as if I'm writing a book, (laughs) which is what, this is why I'm saying all this. I, I just, I think that it's important to stay true to yourself, be effective in this world the way you were destined to and serve a higher purpose, purpose, like whatever that purpose is to you, serve that and just be true to yourself. And the many, you know, if, if, if it's supposed to be, the many will come, they always will come and the right many will come. Um, so I know that was loaded. Sorry guys. Next week I'll try to stick to something lighthearted, you know, maybe like why men cheat. Why women cheat? I don't know. (laughs) I'm going to try to stick to something a little lighthearted next week. I know that was a lot, but it was inspired by an experience in my life. I felt something um, with that, and I have a feeling that a lot of people do too. I think this affects a lot of people, and I'm so blessed to have clarity through my relationship with God. Um, And again, for you, it might be something else, but it's just... I, I know who I am and that's what matters. And it, it's important to be able to take yourself out of these moments quickly and don't let them get to you and just you end up being in a deep, dark hole of negativity. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for listening. I can't believe this is my second one and you guys are here. Thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave a rating and a review go on YouTube and leave me a comment and make sure to subscribe on there as well. And I will see you guys, talk to you guys again. Lena, I got to get a closing to this shit. I don't know how to close this thing out. Anyone know how to close out a podcast? (laughs) I'll talk to you guys next week.